Shalom. The lost ten tribes of Israel are now amongst Western nations. They are amongst these nations and they are either the majority amongst the, pe the peoples of the West or they um, are a sizable minority. Or it may be that in some countries they are the majority in other countries they have simply been historically influential. At all events, they are a power. They are there. The nations we are speaking of include the nations of Western Europe, such as Finland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, the Netherlands, Belgium, Switzerland, France, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, England, the USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa. Uh, the English-speaking nations that we mentioned uh, are especially important because they represent the powers of Joseph, the descendants of Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh. We have, we have uh, more than uh, 120 biblical proofs on our websites. Websites are Britam, B-R-I-T-A-M dot org. Uh, and uh, there, on the, on, uh, there you may see 120 biblical proofs, each proof given with uh, the re relevant uh, verses and also a short article or sometimes several short articles on the subject explaining the whole principles at greater length and uh, we go into this quite uh, deeply and we also have uh, rabbinical evidence we confirm the biblical proofs we have uh, proofs from secular sources history archaeology Linguistics, DNA, uh, national philosophy, almost any field that has something pertinent to say, we show how it too provides evidence concerning the Israelite origins of the peoples in question. And uh, we have a, uh, an enormous amount of evidence, of proofs, or a good, uh, an impressive amount, an impressive amount. And it could uh, even be said to, that we have too much. We have a little bit, maybe we have too much, maybe we're overdoing it, maybe it's a case of overkill. A lot of our proofs are straightforward, black and white, this and that, this shows that, and uh, this is the conclusion. And it's quite obvious, quite, quite clear. And other, other evidence that we use uh, can become quite complicated. We have to uh, introduce our readers to the um, to certain principles, to certain basic facts that are not commonly known. We have to show uh, the reasoning behind what we are trying to say, and in the end, uh, to uh, give our conclusions and, and uh, also uh, prove how why our conclusions are rational, and they are the conclusions to be drawn and not others. And uh, this. Uh, can require some some explanation, efforts of explanation and uh, persuasion, and also uh, a good will on the part of the person hearing an argument, or at least uh, some degree of objectivity, and this is not always present. And uh, in addition to that, we have biblical proofs. Sometimes the biblical proofs run into each other, they overlap each other. Uh, some of them could be uh, condensed down into into uh, into into uh, others. Uh, they could be uh, compressed somewhat. For instance, one of our proofs, or one that seventy of our proofs, seventy of our proofs concern the uh, the seventy uh, people or seventy males who went down to Egypt with Jacob. With Jacob, that is Jacob and his children and his grandchildren, altogether numbered 70 souls who went down to Egypt. And these, are, these people are mentioned in the Bible. And uh, the Bible itself tells us that these people became the heads of uh, tribes and tribal clans. And we show how these 70 people became uh, tribes and national entities in West European history. And that each and every one of them was important in his own right. And therefore each and every one of them sometimes through somewhat com convoluted pathways uh, made his mark uh, in certain areas and it's historically important 
and uh, therefore each and every one of them is a proof in its own right. But nevertheless, if we wanted to, we could uh, condense them all, condense these 70 individuals, these 70 uh, tribal clans, all into one proof. Or at least all into one, one uh, principle. And then, so this is this is this is the same the same uh, the same principle the same ruling applies elsewhere applies in all of, in everything that we have we have a lot of evidence an enormous amount of evidence and sometimes it could be that for some of our, our followers who are interested but uh, may be overwhelmed by everything by it all by they may not be able to see the wood for the trees as I say. So therefore, we've decided to present uh, the the what we have, or to present uh, chosen aspects of what we have under three main headings, three main points, each one which encompass several sub subjects, so several other uh, subdivisions, each one. But uh, nevertheless, they're quite simple. It is quite simple, quite direct, quite straightforward. And the proofs are there, and the proofs are quite obvious. So therefore, we are uh, we will say we will tell what these uh, three proofs are. These three points that we chosen are the location, the numbers, and the international power of the uh, of the ten tribes according to the Bible. And the, the location of the ten tribes according to the Bible, the Bible says that the Israelites from the lost ten tribes, that they were destined to be located at the ends of the earth. They were found at the ends of the earth, meaning the geographical extremities of continental masses, the ends of the earth. That is what the Bible says several times in connection with the lost ten tribes in the future. Uh, see Isaiah 24.16. 26.15, 41, 8 to 9, 43, 6, 49, 6. It also says, that, or indicates that they would be found all over the world, but especially, but that especially in the north, in the, as it says in Jeremiah 3.18, uh, 3.31, 31, 6 to 10, and they would be found in the west, as Isaiah 24.14 says, and Isaiah 1.10 says, and also in the northwest, as Isaiah 49, 12 says. And uh, this, is, uh, this is when we take the land of Israel as being the center of the earth, the, uh, the, our, point of, uh, our center of direction. The center from which we derive these directions is the land of Israel. It also said that they will be found in several oceans, Numbers 24, 7. So uh, we have, have these, uh, this is the location of lost in tribes. In general, they will be at the ends of the earth, it would be mainly in the north and in the west, or northwest, and then they would also be in several oceans. And then the West European peoples whom we identify as descended from lost in tribes of Israel fulfill this criteria. We find them in these areas, and uh, the British Isles and nations that emerge from them, that we spoke of, Canada, USA, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, that, that is uh, the tribes of, of Joseph, the, they, we find them in uh, several oceans. We find them uh, still centered to the north and to the west of, of, of the land of Israel, with the British Isles and North America across the ocean. And also, we find they have offshoots in Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, important, which are important centers for them. And therefore, they fulfill the, these uh, requirements. Another point is the numbers. The lost in tribes were just seen to number a great number of people. The spot so lost in tribes will be extremely numerous and it will become a major portion and a significant entity in, uh, entrance, uh, at entrance level in, 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 amongst, in, the world, in the total world population. They would be uh, a rock in the centre of the earth. They would become a majority or a major element within the uh, population of mankind. And therefore we have to look for an ethnic group in which uh, that is a group in which the different members are more or less related to each other or have a similarity and an inter interconnection with each other and uh, that also comprise a significant element in world population. Inhabitants of the British Isles and their offshoots and also where of Europe, West Europeans in general, they, they, they fulfill this requirement. 
And as for becoming um, numerous, as it says, it says in Genesis, uh, uh, in Genesis uh, twenty-four sixty, and they blessed Rebecca and said to her, "Thou thy sister be you the mother of thousands and millions, and that you'll see possess the gates of those which hate them." Also in Genesis fifteen five, and he brought him outside and said, "Look now toward heaven, count the stars if you are able to count them." And he said to them, "So shall your descendants be." Uh, Genesis fifteen five. And also Genesis 22:17 it says, "A blessing I will bless you, and uh, multiplying will I multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gates of the enemies." So here we have we have our uh, blessings that they should be extremely numerous, uh, numbering thousands of millions according to the King James, or at least tens of millions according to other translations. But a, a great number of people in world. Uh, in world, in, at world standards, according to our day, according to our, our, our point of relevance. And uh, this is repeated, a piece of the way you can also, 20, Genesis 24, 60 also speaks of this. So does Numbers 23, 10, Isaiah 10, 22, Isaiah 24, 16, 26, 15, or Isaiah 1, 10. All of those repeating the message of the Israelites. And the end times, or towards the end times, would be extremely numerous, and that they would be an important element amongst in the, in, amongst the world population. The peoples we identify as belong to the Lost Tribes fit this. Another point that they, that the Lost Tribes would have power. They would have power on a world scale. This is what the Bible says. They would become the most powerful nations on earth. See Numbers 24-7-9, Micah 5-7-9, they would rule the oceans, Numbers 24-7, they would control major strategic passageways, see Genesis 22-17 and 24-60. They would also be the policeman, the ruling element in the world, see Jeremiah 51-20 and Zechariah 10-7. And this is what the Western nations historically did. We had the France and the Netherlands had an important element they were at an important empires spread all over the world. They were followed by the British, the British Empire, which was uh, succeeded by American hegemony, US hegemony, which is a continuation from a geopolitical historical point of view. American hegemony is a conti continuation, a seamless continuation of the British Empire. And the, the ethnic elements are also related. They are spring forth from each other, one could say. And they use their foreign policy and long-range military strategy to uh, to to uh, to impose a type of a peace, a type of a civilized minimum, a modicum of civilized behavior on the earth. And it was also what which was prophesied, as we mentioned elsewhere. Uh, and they but they also base their um, their their control or not their control their their, their search, assertion of their of their power of their influence on the holding strategic points strategic pathways and these are the gates of the enemies that it was prophesied that these sites would hold and, this, and America does this America has bases all over the world and islands of the, in throughout the oceans uh, has bases in Europe. Bases in the central and central Europe, bases in the Caucasus Mountains on the Caspian Sea, close to Russia. Um, when uh, Libya uh, was antagonistic, it had, and it still has a base in Libya. It has a base in Cuba. It has a bases in the Philippines. It has bases off the coast of Japan. This is how America works. It had, all over the world. It has rights, or, or rights that are almost uh, axiomatic, autonomous rights to strategic uh, uh, pathways, one could say, entrance gates, gates of their enemies, uh, and, they ha and this is what, what America builds its, its, its military strategy upon, possessing these and using them, utilizing them in case of need. These really are the gates of your enemies that the Bible prophesied that these rights would would be blessed with, and this is what they have been. And it says in Genesis twenty two seventeen, blessing on will bless you, and multiplying will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. And they blessed Rebecca and said unto her, Thou our sister be you the mother of thousands of men, that your seed possess the gates of those who hate them. Twenty four sixty. Jeremiah fifty one uh, uh, 
It also speaks about the power of Israel in the end times. It says, A portion of, of Jacob is not like them, for he is the maker of all things, and Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. You are my battle axe and weapons of war. For with you will I break the nations in pieces. With you I will destroy kingdoms. With you I will break in pieces the horse and its rider. With you I will break in pieces the chariot and its rider. With you I will break in pieces man and woman. With you I will break in pieces old and young. With you I will break in pieces young man and the maiden. With you also I will break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. With you I will also break in pieces the farm and yoke of auction. With you will I break in pieces governors and rulers. All this is said to yourself. This is an indication that these are lights. We're destined to become powerful nations at the end times, and that is what they have been. Micah 5 says, And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people like you from the Lord. By like showers on the grass that tarry for no man, nor wait for the sons of men. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles, in the midst of many peoples, like a lion among the beasts of the forest, like a young lion among flocks of sheep, who would be passes through, both treads down and tears in pieces, and none can deliver. Your hand shall be lifted up against your adversaries, and all your enemies shall be cut off. And the Bible is full of all these blessings. And, this, and that, so these are the main points. These are three main points of great importance. Uh, a number, great numbers, a location, power. And all of the, and they refer to the Lost Ten Tribes. They are indications as to where the Lost Ten Tribes are. And they are quite simple. It's there in black and white. This is what the Bible says. This is what the reality is. One fits the other. There is no going getting away from it. And these elements are fulfilled in the nations that we identify as belong to to the Austrian tribes of Israel, and they do not fit any other group of peoples. And uh, this is proof. And this proof is uh, simple, it's easy to remember, it's easy to look up, it's easy to refer to, and it's convincing. And it's a beginning, it's a beginning, it gets people interest, interested, and from there, if you wish, you can go on and bring in more and more factors and get more and more involved and bring more and more complicated and, and, and convoluted arguments and proofs, which you have to, which do exist. But uh, to start off with something simple, these three points are simple and they are true and they are direct and they and they are they can be verified on the spot. Location, large numbers of people on a world scale, and also power in an international level. Thank you very much. This is Yair Davidi. I've been speaking.